In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. One of the very famous chapters in the scripture about the resurrection is 1 Corinthians 15. And 1 Corinthians 15 answers so many questions about the resurrection. For example, answers the question, what if Jesus Christ did not raise, uh, was not risen from the dead? How our life would look like? And there's a question between the kingdom of the Son and the kingdom of the Father, which is very confusing to many people. Also answer the question about, uh, or raises the question about uh, baptism for the dead. And what does it mean to be baptized for the dead? Also, answer the question, how we will be risen? How are the dead raised up? And with what body do they come? And lastly, answer the question about those who will remain alive until the second coming of Christ. What will happen to them? So, Jan, I don't know. Uh, I'll try to address as many as of these questions uh, as the time allow. So, Jan, if you turn your Bible to First Corinthians chapter 15, we can put it on the screen so uh, you can follow up with me. Uh, moreover, brethren, I declare to you the gospel which I preached to you, which also you received, and in which you stand. So he's telling them, now I am explaining again the gospel. Gospel means the good news, because the New Testament was not written yet. So that when you read the gospel in the New Testament, he refers not to Matthew, Mark, John, Luke. He refers to the good news. Gospel, evangelion means good news, glad tidings. So he's telling them, I declare to you the good news which I preached to you before and you received and in which you stand. And also by which also you are saved. So the good news of salvation should be, a, we are Sunday school teacher, should be the focus of our preaching. And also we need to emphasize that only believing in the resurrection of Christ, that's the only way for us to be saved. By which also you are saved if you hold the fast to that word which I preach it to you unless you believed in vain. And he is saying if, for example, our students not holding this fast, not living by the resurrection of Christ, then their faith is in vain. And for I delivered to you first of all that which I also received. And that is the tradition. He receives something and deliver. And also we as Sunday school servants, we receive and then we deliver. So we don't preach our own gospel, but we preach what we received. I don't preach what I am convinced with or I am persuaded with, but I preach what I received. That Christ died for our sins according to the scripture. Meaning the sentence of death that was upon all humanity, Jesus Christ actually died on our behalf. And that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scripture. Then he is giving evidence and the most important evidence until now even in the court is the evidence of what? Eyewitness. So he is mentioning the eyewitness those who saw Christ after his resurrection. He was seen by Kephas, Lois and Peter. 
then by the 12 uh, some people say uh, but they were 11 why he said 12 but 12 is the name of the group regardless of their number you know so that is they referred to this group as the 12 after that he was seen it's very important. He was seen by over 500 brethren at once. So they are not in delusion. 500 uh, persons at once. All of them saw him in the same moment. Of whom the greater part remained to the, to the present, but some have fallen asleep. So yes, some died from the 500. But during the time in which he wrote this epistle, most of the 500 were alive, eyewitnesses to the resurrection of Christ. Then, after that, he was seen by James, and then by all the apostles, that's before his ascension. Then, the last of all, he was seen by me also, as by one born out of time. Uh, born out of, uh, of time, it uh, was Miscarriage? Uh, miscarriage, yeah. Born out of time. Yani, then it reflect his humbleness, how he refers to himself. Yeah. And why he called himself born out of due time. Born out of due time. For I am the least of the apostles. But then, least of the apostles, then. It's too much for me to be called the least of the apostles. Who am not worthy to be called an apostle. I'm not the least of the apostles. No, I am not worthy to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. How you became an apostle, it is the grace of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. It's not me, it's the grace of God. And his grace toward me was not in vain. The grace he, he gave me, actually, I kindled and it was in vain. I labored more abundantly than they all, yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. I'm sure you know the story. Paul had thorn in the flesh and he wanted God to heal him. God said, no, my grace is sufficient. So he knows what he did, either in writing 14 letters, or in traveling between so many countries, or enduring so many persecution. This was not him. His body was weak, and the sword in the flesh, it is the grace of God which was him. Then he's again, after bringing all this evidence, for the resurrection of Christ, he said, Therefore, whether it was I or they, the apostle, so we preach that Christ is risen, and so you believed. Now, he is, now he's addressing the first question. If Christ is preached that he had been raised from the dead, how do some among you say there is no resurrection of the dead? What is the benefit? Yani, why Christ dies and carry our sin and be buried and rose and then we will vanish then why he did all of this it doesn't make sense that's why St. Paul said, if there is no resurrection of the dead then Christ is not risen Christ rose from the dead in order for us to be risen if in his economy, we will not be risen, then this plan of salvation is in vain. If there is no resurrection for the dead, then Christ is not risen. If Christ is not risen, what are the outcome of this? Our haga, our preaching is empty. In Masihiyya, Christianity is different than any religion. Any religion is about morality. Teach you how to follow certain morals. Christianity is not about morality. 
Christianity is about how to be united with Christ, to be one with Christ. And in him you will die to the world, and in him you will risen. In him you say, I no longer who live, but Christ lives in me. In him we'll have eternal life. Our salvation is only the Christ. He is the only way. He is the true way to heaven. Christianity is not just morality. Teach us how to be good citizens. No. Christianity is built on the fact that Jesus Christ died, buried, rose, ascended. That is a Christianity. And we need to participate in this by being one with Christ. Then if Christ is not risen, then our preaching is empty and your faith is empty. You will not benefit anything from believing. And also, we are found false witnesses of God. Because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ, whom he did not raise up, if in fact the dead did not rise. So will be false witnesses. And why I invent a story and then, and I know it is a lie, pure lie, and then I die for this. It doesn't make sense. One time I was saying this to so one of the, the people attendant, in other religions, people die for their faith. All their faith is not, is, is false, is, is not right. So what is the difference between Christianity and people who die in other religion? Fa'ultillu, those who die in other religion, those who are brainwashed, but the people who know the reality, they never die. They never die, and they never actually accept to, be, to die for religion. They are using others, they brainwash them, using others to kill themselves for the sake of the religion. But these leaders, we never heard that these leaders went and sacrificed themselves for their faith. Because they know it is political movement, like a person dies for political movement. But Christianity is not. Verse 16, For if the dead do not rise, then Christ is not risen. And if Christ is not risen, your faith is futile. You are, you, you are still in your sins. Because there is no forgiveness of our sins. There is no purification. Unless Christ carry our sins, and dies and pay the penalty instead of us. That's the only way for us to be forgiven. Which means that all those who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. They did not benefit anything from believing in Christ. Like any person, whether he believed in Christ or did not believe in Christ, خلاص, all became the same. And then St. Paul said, If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men the most pitiful. Yani, there is no fairness on earth. There is no justice on earth. Some people, like in the story of Lazarus and the rich man, from the day they are born until the day they die, in suffering. And all of us, we suffer more or less differently. Then if there is no hope in another life, our hope is here in, on, on earth, in Christ, who are the most pitiful. Think about Lazarus. If Lazarus, there is no hope in eternal life, then it's misery. He was poor, hungry, sick. Nobody showed compassion on him. Nobody showed mercy on him. That's misery. But what makes the story of Lazarus and the rich man make sense believing in eternal life?
But now Christ is risen, and after he made explained clearly, it doesn't make any sense to say there is no resurrection for the dead or Christ did not risen after he mentioned all the eyewitnesses, then he is stating a fact. Christ is risen from the dead and has become the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. As he rose, first fruits, he's number one, and all of us will be risen. Totally, Tamafi Lazarus was risen before Christ, the daughter of Jairus, son of the widow. But all of these, they rose with a mortal body, and they died again. Christ is the only one who rose with the glorified body, the body of resurrection. So he's number one. And all of us will be risen in his second coming. For since by man, Adam, came death, by man, Christ, also came the resurrection of the dead. Through Adam, death entered. Through Jesus Christ, second Adam, the life entered into the world. For in Adam all die, even so in Christ all shall be made alive. All of us, we died in Adam. In Christ, he is available to everyone. But who will believe those who believe in him? If everyone in the world believed in Christ, then all of them will be saved. But unfortunately, not all of them will believe in Christ. But each one in his order, Christ is the first fruit. He rose from the dead. Then the order says, afterward, those who are Christ at his second coming. Those who belong to Christ will be risen at the second coming. And we need to understand before I read, starting from verse 24, because it's confusing. After the fall of Adam and Eve, all of us who became in the kingdom of Satan. God sent his son, Jesus Christ, to establish kingdom of, the, of, of light, kingdom of righteousness. That is the kingdom of Christ. And we say in all our prayers, our Lord God, Savior, and King of us all. And we say the Lord reigned over the wood. So now, on earth here, who's our King Christ? In baptism, when we renounce Satan, we rebel against the kingdom of Satan. Then when we confess Jesus Christ, we enter into his kingdom. And Jesus will be our King. His kingdom shall have no end. But in the second coming, Jesus will deliver the kingdom to God the Father. In, um, in, thanks, sorry, in Lord's Prayer, when we say, Thy kingdom come, the kingdom of Christ started on the day of crucifixion, how we say, Thy kingdom come, like in the future. But the answer to this Lord's Prayer, addressing whom? Addressing the Father, not the Son. So when we say thy kingdom come, we are speaking about the kingdom of the Father. About the kingdom of the Father. When the Son delivers the kingdom to the Father. Ashkeda verse 24, then comes the end. When he, Jesus Christ, delivers the kingdom to God the Father. When he, God the Father, puts an end to all rule and all authority and all power. So during this time, God the Father is putting every authority and every power and every rule to submit under the feet of the Son. When every rule, authority, and power submit under the feet of the Son, then the end will come. Until now, we don't see everything yet submit. For he, the Son, must reign till he, the Father, has put all enemies under his feet, the feet of the Son. And I'm, يعني, 
St. Paul is using he for the father and son, so it's confusing. When I read these verses, when I see he, I will say the son or the father. So it will be clear. You will, you will see you will see how it makes sense after we finish the passage. Fahara ten min twenty four. Then comes the end. When the end will come, when the father no, sorry, when the son, when he the son delivers the kingdom to God the Father. When the father puts an end to all rule and all authority and power. For the son must reign till the father has put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy that will be destroyed is death. Death entered as an enemy after the fall of Adam. And reigning reigned over us, we die. Even the physical death. But when all of us will be risen, then this enemy Allah is destroyed. There is no death after the second coming of Christ. The son must reign till the father has put all enemies under the feet of the son. The last enemy that will be destroyed is death. Okay. Let me explain verse 27 before I read it. When we say the father put all things, the word all, all things under the feet of the son. The word all here include the father or not? Some people would say all will include the father. The father put all things under the son. So all include the father or not? Hmm? Exclude the father. That's what he is explaining in verse 27. For he, the father, has put all things under his feet, under the feet of the son. But when he, as the Holy Spirit who inspired the scripture, says all things are put under him, under the Son, it is evident that he, the Father, who put all things under him, under the Son, is accepted, not included. Clear? So it's clear while I repeat it again. Clear 27. For he, the Father, has put all things under his feet, under the feet of the Son. But when he, the Holy Spirit, who inspired the Scripture, say in the Scripture, all things are put under him, under the Son, it is evident that he, the Father, who put all things under him, under the sun, is accepted, not included. Now, when all things are made subject to him, to the sun, all things subject to the sun, then the sun himself will also be subject to the father. All the fathers all. We are the body of Christ. So delivering the kingdom, then we submit to the Father, the body of Christ. Then the Son himself will also be subject to him, to the Father, who put all things under him, under the Son, that God, the Father, may be all in all. So in this area, in, in these camp verses, these verses, he explained the difference between the kingdom of the Son and the kingdom of the Father. So when we say in the Lord's Prayer, thy kingdom come, I'm speaking to the Father in the future. His kingdom will come in the second coming. But when we say we live in the millennium, Mulk al right now, we are speaking about the kingdom of the Son. Right? Verse 29. Otherwise, He's giving another evidence about the resurrection of Christ and the resurrection of the dead. What will they do who are baptized for the dead? 
if the dead do not rise at all, why then are they baptized for the dead? In the beginning, in the first century of Christianity, when people understood that resurrection, we participate in it through baptism, and baptism is essential for our salvation. Because if I'm not risen in baptism, I will not be risen in the second coming. So some people said, okay, what about my father, my grandfather, my grandmother? They died without being baptized. And because of their love for them, they wanted to be baptized for their dead, so, and on behalf of them, so they will participate in the resurrection of Christ. This is a wrong practice. Fish hack is not to baptize for the dead. But St. Paul is, see how people believed in the, the resurrection of the dead to the extent, and if somebody died without baptism, they want to be baptized on their behalf so they will be risen. And St. Paul using this wrong practice as an evidence how people at that time they believed strongly in the resurrection of the dead. But there is another explanation. I read it by um, Bishop Musa of Lewis. He said about this verse, many people when they saw like St. James, son of Zebedee, he died for Christ. St. Peter died for Christ. Stephen died for Christ. So they believed in Christ and were baptized. In their mind, if Stephen, this young man, died for Christ, then Stephen believed in how he will rise again. Then the resurrection of the dead is a fact. So let us be baptized. Let us believe in Jesus Christ. So we'll be risen with St. Stephen. So it can be understood also uh, in, the, in the way that I'm explaining right now, in the, when people, non-believers, saw young men and women die for Christ, believing in the resurrection, so they believed in Christ and were baptized to, be, to participate in the resurrection. Then St. Paul by the way, Mormon until now is he baptized for the dead. Yani, if somebody became Mormon, I want to be baptized for my uncle and for my grandfather, and they baptize them for the dead. That's until now, this practice in the Mormon. Another way to, to convince them why we carry our cross? Why we suffer for Christ? Why we receive persecution for Christ? Why we are in prison and killed and beaten up? That's what he said in verse 30. Why do we stand in jeopardy every hour? I affirm by the boasting in you which I have in Jesus Christ, our Lord, I die daily. Every day, he was actually exposed to persecution that can lead to death. He was stoned more than one time. And giving example in verse 32, if in the manner of men I have fought with beasts, people who have the nature of beasts, they are people, but they are like beasts. And he fought with them, fought for, at Ephesus, fought for, for them for Christ, yeah. What advantage is it to me why I'm doing all of this? Actually, if the dead do not rise, our motto should be, let us eat and drink for tomorrow we'll die. Let's have fun. Tomorrow we'll die. Why we do all of this? There is no benefit from it. Apparently, some false teachers went to Corinth and corrupted their mind. 
Do not be deceived. Evil company corrupt good habit. Because you allowed these false teachers to be around you, that's why you start doubting your faith. Awake to righteousness. Be alert. If somebody approaches you, you need to examine and judge whether he is a false teacher or not, whether he's a good company to me or not. Awake to righteousness and do not sin. For some do not have the knowledge of God. They come to you and you accepted them. And they don't have the knowledge of God. I speak this to you, to your shame. One of the questions that they used to cast doubt on the resurrection of Christ, you were like, eh, but someone will say, how are the dead raised up? And with what body do they come? Excellent. If I'm handicapped in the resurrection, I'll be handicapped. If I died at age of 12, in the resurrection, I'll be 12. If I died at age of 100, I'll be 100. So, and, and what about our body? Are we risen and our body need to eat and drink and sleep? And So, <coughs> this question, how are they raised and with what body uh, they come? St. Paul explained it this way. If you want to plant a fruit, you want to plant apple. Do you plant the apple itself or you take a seed? Take a seed. That's what you plant. But from this seed comes the apple. If you compare between the seed and the apple, they are different in shape, different in taste, different in color. They are different in everything. But this apple comes from this seed. Although they are different in shape, taste, color, but this apple comes from this seed. So he said, this body is the seed. And the seed, you need to bury it. So when we die, we are buried. Then in resurrection, God will give us another body, another shape. This doesn't mean this shape was created all new. No. The body of resurrection comes from this body. Because this body who participated with the soul, either in righteousness or in evil, should be compensated either with the eternal life or hell. But this body, God will give it a shape fitting to the eternal life. That's what he said here. Uh, foolish one. What you saw is not made alive unless it dies. It has to be buried and dies. And what you saw, you don't saw the body that shall be. You don't saw the apple. But mere grain, just a seed. Perhaps wheat or some other grain. But God gives it a body as he pleases. Maybe when you see the seed of the apple and the seed of, for example, peach, all of them similar to each other, يعني, the seeds. But God be give each seed a different uh, body as pleases God according to his economy. And to each seed, its own body. كل نوع من أنواع الفروض بيأخذ body مختلف. All flesh is not the same flesh. And even here on earth, في flesh بتاع birds, animals, human being, reptiles. So all flesh is not the same flesh. But there is one kind of flesh of men, another flesh of animal, another of fish, another of birds. Also, there are celestial bodies and terrestrial bodies. يعني in Nagum, the stars or planets different than what's on earth here. But the glory of the celestial is one and the glory of the terrestrial 
is another. So the command, في difference in glory. يبقى سانت بول عايز يقول ايه؟ ان احنا will be risen different bodies. How this will be determined as he pleases. Different in glory. Different in body, different in shape, different in glory. For example, there is one glory of the sun and another glory of the moon and another glory of the star. And also, one star differs than another in glory. If you understand this, then you can understand the resurrection of the dead. So also is the resurrection of the dead. The body is sown in corruption. This body. Corruption means um, we get sick, ill, die. But it is raised in incorruption. In heaven there is no illness, no sickness. No room for a physician to work. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. Yani, uh, there is no honor here. When you see the sun and the moon, there is beauty in them. But you cannot see here. But in, in, in heaven, they will be risen in glory. That's why we put the hollow around the, the scenes. It is sown in weakness. You work some hours and you say, Weakness, but it is raised in power. We will not get tired. It is sown a natural body. Physical needs. You need to eat, you need to drink, you need to sleep. But it's raised in spiritual bodies. All these physiological needs are not uh, needed there. So there is a natural body from Adam and Eve through our parents. And there is a spiritual body that will receive from Jesus Christ. And so it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being. God created the body, then he breathed the spirit. Adam became a living being, a living soul. Last Adam, who is Jesus Christ, he is not a living being only, but he is a life-giving spirit. He can give life to others. So the resurrection will be becoming one with Jesus Christ, who is a life-giving spirit. Who can first? Jesus Christ or Adam? Adam came first, then Jesus Christ. And from Adam we took the natural body. From Jesus we'll take the spiritual body. Then that's why we start here natural, then when we go to heaven, we'll have the spiritual body. Verse 46, however the spiritual is not first, but the natural, and afterward the spiritual. And here we have the natural, but then the spiritual. It's like Adam came before Christ. The first man was of earth, made of dust, natural. The second Adam was not born of the dust, but is the Lord from heaven. That's why he did not come from seed of man. If he comes from the seed of man, he's born of the dust like all of us. But he did not come from a seed of man. So he is from heaven. As was man of dust, Adam, so also those who are made of dust, Lawahna. And as is the heavenly man, Jesus Christ, so also are those who are heavenly when we go to heaven in the second resurrection. Here on earth, we became like Adam. As we have borne the image of the man of dust, Adam, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly man, Jesus Christ. That's why he said he's the first fruit, and all of us 
will be risen in the second coming of Christ. And then he is making firm statement here. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. This human nature cannot inherit. Not human nature, no. Flesh and blood, يعني, the body, the natural body that has physiological needs cannot inherit the kingdom of God because in heaven will not eat, will not drink, will not marry. It is not happened in heaven. And another thing, this is corrupted body. Nor does corruption inherit incorruption. Comes back to the last question in this chapter. What about and if Christ comes right now, all of us who are alive, what will happen to us? For those who will remain alive until the coming of Christ, they will be changed from this natural body to the spiritual body. And this change will not take, it will be in the twinkling of an eye. حاجة بسرعة كده يعني. سيدنا البابا شنودة كان دايما يقول على الآية دي الواحد يموت على الواقف يعني يموت ويصحى كده يعني Behold I tell you a mystery We shall not all sleep Not everyone will die But we shall all be changed في عبرانيين بيقول Everyone should die كل نفس تزوخ الموت But هنا بيقول shall not all sleep عشان كده انا قلت لكم حكايه نتغير ديا we shall all be changed ديا mean you die and rise but in a twinkling of an eye so there is death and resurrection in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet but who will rise first the dead the dead, يعني in first Thessalonians chapter 4, when St. Paul addressed this point again, he said, we will not precede the dead. The dead in Christ will be risen first. And they will come with him on the cloud, then we will be changed and caught up to meet the Lord on the cloud. And this is the rapture. Ibatani. The dead will be risen first, first Thessalonians chapter 4. Come with Christ on the cloud. Those who remain alive, they will be changed in a moment, in a twinkle of an eye. Then will be caught up to meet Christ on the cloud. This is the biblical meaning of rapture. Rapture is the second coming. Second coming. Rapture will happen in the second time. You can read it in the second coming. Very clear when you read it in First Thessalonians chapter 4. In English, we will quote up. In Arabic, we will rapture. So, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound. And the dead will be raised in corrupt. The dead. And then we who remain alive to the coming of the Lord shall be changed. Why? Why will be changed? Because again, this corruptible must put on incorruption. This mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible 
has put on incorruption, and this mortal has put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that's written, death is swallowed up in victory. That's Fakrin Lama Al, last enemy will be defeated is death. That is the defeat of death, when all of us will be risen. Death which entered into the world by the envy of the devil. This is reigning until now. Yes, Christ set us free, but we die even physically. Which reigned over us. But the defeat of death with the resurrection. Then St. Paul said, Oh, death, where is your sting? They must run uh, when a scorpion and bite a person. So the poison is a sting that leads to death. So what is the poison of death? It is the sin. When we are bitten by sin and we accept the sin and we practice sin, that is the sting of death. Where is your sting? O oh, Hades, where is your victory? Can Hades before Christ? So Hades was victorious. Hades is swallowed up all the righteous before the resurrection of Christ. Christ transferred them in paradise after crucifixion. The sting of death is sin. And the strength of sin is the law. Any strength of the sin is the law. The law told me what I should do and what I shouldn't. But did not give me the power not to do it. And I was told, if I violated the law, I'll be under death. So, sin took strength from the law to put me under death. There is a commandment, don't lie, don't steal, whatever. I couldn't. And I did, the law did not help me. The law told me, do and don't, do and don't. But in, when Christ came, the law still exists, but he came also with grace. And the grace gave me the power to fulfill the law. And if the al Adim Ali, don't commit adultery. And David, Simpson, uh, Solomon, all of them, these great people, fell in adultery. In the New Testament, God told me, don't commit adultery. But he gave me the power not to commit adultery. After baptism, sin has no power over me. In the Old Testament, sin had power. But now, those who are baptized, sin has no power over them. Unless I choose to sin by my own will. That is the grace. So, strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, speak by about the grace, who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ, who came by grace. We read in John chapter 1, the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth in Jesus Christ. Now I have no excuse. Shkid Rabbina took the, the commandment into a higher level. In the Old Testament, don't commit adultery. And many righteous people could not keep this commandment. In the, old, in the New Testament, I have grace. So God, take it to a higher level. If you look at a woman to lust after her, you committed adultery. But how come you're up the Nesma Idrush to keep this? How do you take it to a higher level? Yes, because now you have the grace. These people in the Old Testament were under the power of sin. Sin had power over sin, them. But in the new covenant, after we are baptized, sin has no power over us unless we, by our own will, allow sin to reign in us. That's very important. He concluded the chapter by saying, Therefore, my beloved brethren, 
after you understand all of this. Be steadfast in your faith. Don't let somebody cast doubt in your heart. Immovable. Don't move and be shaken by false teachers. Always abounding in the work of the Lord. You have the grace. As he said, I labor more than the rest of the apostles, but it is not me, it is the grace of God. Knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord because there is a resurrection. If there is no resurrection, then all our labor is in vain. But when we know that our labor is not in vain in the Lord, خلاص. The most difficult question about the resurrection St. Paul answered in this chapter. So, I hope يعني, it became clear to all of us. Glory be to God forever and ever. Amen. If you have any comments or questions. الكريم على الأشرار يعني آه. The last trumpet will sound then the righteous will be risen but also the non-righteous will be risen as we read in John chapter 5 uh, his sound let me read it if he two resurrection resurrection of life and the resurrection of condemnation in John chapter 5 in verse 28. Don't marvel at this, for the hour is coming in which all who are in the graves will hear his voice. Comes forth those who have done good to the resurrection of life, and those who have done evil to the resurrection of condemnation. So everybody will be risen. But the righteous will come with the Lord on the cloud. The Non-righteous, they will be risen to the resurrection of condemnation. They will be standing on his left side. Will be separated. He will send his angels to separate the righteous from the non-righteous. Nafs kalam Those who remain alive. في ناس منهم righteous و non-righteous. The right, all of them will be changed. Not only the, the righteous. Then the righteous will be caught up to meet the Lord and the, the righteous who came with him on the cloud to meet him in the air. Then the non-righteous will be risen also and will go with the other group. Then the Lord will have the sheep on his right, the goats on his left. Then he will start the judgment. Uh, the Lord Jesus يعني, هم, the righteous people from the Old Testament when they died and went to Hades they know the Messiah will come and save them but they didn't know how so when Christ descended to Hades and he broke the gates of Hades this sound and this light not the, the, the wicked did not actually see it or hear it. Only the righteous. I bring glad tidings to you. Christ is risen. Christ crucified. He is coming now. He's going to take you to the paradise. You will not be in, in Hades anymore. That preached, preached good news. The case dismissed. Fanta, you go to Allah, I have good news with you. You know, your case is dismissed. Now you'll be released. No, no. Does it mean this? They will receive the good news and now they will be transferred to the paradise of joy.
هو كان الناس يقولوا كتير ان the first one who entered the paradise is the thief but بوب شنود قال لا ليه بقى لا لان كرايست died before the thief يعني هما they came found Christ is already dead but the two thieves were not dead that's why they have to break their legs so Christ descended to Hades and he took the righteous this happened even before the death of the of the thief so they start going to the paradise and then the thief when he died he went to the paradise نعم؟ مش أول واحد Today will be with me in the paradise. Yes. عشان كده من أول الساعة the 12 hour of Good Friday we open the curtain of the altar to symbolize اللي هو opening the paradise of joy. وكل الصلاة from the 12 hour until the end of the liturgy of resurrection, كل الصلوات, the, the altar is open. يعني أبو غلامسيس كلها ال altar is open. تسبحة نص الليل, midnight praises بتاعة uh, عيد القيامة, the altar is open. يعني كل الصلوات, a symbol of opening the paradise. أسئلة تانية؟ أيها الحمل الحقيقي الذي لله الآب يا من قام بين الأموات في اليوم الثالث قوم أقدامنا في طريق السلام احفظ من كل شر جميع أمحاتنا بالسؤالات والطلبات التي ترفحنا كل حين والدة الإله القديسة الطاهرة مريم وسائر أرسوف الملائكة والأباء والأنبياء والرسل والمبشرين والإنجليين والشهداء والنساك والسواح والعباد المجاهدين الذين أرض رب عمان ومصلح كل حين بركة ملك هذا اليوم بركة قديس هذا اليوم بركة رئيس الملائكة الجليل مخيل وقديس حان المعمدان وسادات الأباء الرسل بركة ماري مورس كاروز الدول المصرية والشهيد العظيم ماري جيركس والشهيد عفاف ديميانا بركة الأنباء أنطونيوس الأنبياء نسكاما وبركة قيام المجيدة والخمسين مقدسة بركاتهم مقدسة نعمتهم قوتهم معنتهم شفعتهم حبتهم تكون معنا جميعا أمين بخريستوس بن نوتي O King of Peace grant us your peace establish for us your peace forgive us our sins for yours is the power glory blessing and majesty forever Amen O Lord makes worthy to pray thankfully our Father who art in heaven Now, love of God the Father, the grace of His only begotten Son, our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ, communion gift of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Go in peace. May the peace of the Lord be with you all. Amen.